Hi there, it's uh, great to be sitting with Jill Douglas, um, who is a dentist. We were actually at uh, university together, uh, qualifying uh, in Glasgow in the year 1999. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it kind of dates us, I guess, um, by saying that. But um, now Jill, you're, you're back in Glasgow just now because of COP26, is that right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yep. Got the train down last Saturday from sunny Aberdeen. There you go. And, and so what is it that you've been doing? Why, why are you involved? Um, so I volunteered to help out with Glasgow Street Pastors or Glasgow City Street Pastors. Um, they were they've got patrols on in the afternoons and had some evening patrols as well at the start. Okay, and so what what are the street pastors? What do they what do they do? So Glasgow City Street Pastors are out on um, the evenings, usually Friday and Saturday nights, um, providing a safe zone um, for people who are maybe worse for the wear um, are. It's very polite Likely. way of saying, uh, fill a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing because they, on, the, on the first patrol, um, so there's lots of police being drafted in and um, the, we had a situation where we needed the police and the, uh, the first police we came across were from Derbyshire mm -hmm. and the, the medic who was speaking to them said in a very Glasgow accent, oh mate, you need to help us, he's pissed. And they just stood and looked at him. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> so uh, yeah, <laughs> the uh, so we we help people um, care, listen, and help is their their motto, mm -hmm. and um, we have there's a, usually they are in the city centre, but we were asked if we would patrol the green zone and the, the blue zone. Okay, so I'm guessing, I mean, the, the, the Glasgow, um, the Street Passers, is that the name of the organisation? So I take it they, they exist and do a lot of work just for normal weekends and then things like that. So I take it they saw there's going to be a huge influx of people coming into Glasgow and, and we're going to need extra yeah. folk, yeah. Yeah, just, they, they help people, they, they don't have a first aid unit or anything, they just are, are with people and so they knew that there was going to be lots and lots of people. I think 30,000 people have moved into Glasgow and yeah. for the feeling of it, 30,000 people moved out of Glasgow as well to let their flats out and their houses <laughs> exactly, out yeah, for, people, for yeah. accommodation. Yeah. Um, so, and so the street pastors have got phone numbers of the local charities, mm -hmm. um, homeless units and things like that to link in with them mm -hmm. um, to just give support because services generally aren't open after five o'clock on a friday of course and so that's when things can can happen yeah so you work in aberdeen is that right um i'm in Inverurie. Okay. yeah we've got a, um four surgery practice in Inverurie, so it's about 12 miles outside of aberdeen yeah um lots of people have thought i've come down from inverness and <laughs> they have no idea where it is but, <laughs> so uh, yeah just outside of aberdeen uh -huh. um in so i live in Kintore. So my commute is, is three miles to Inverurie nice. uh, yeah. in the countryside. So living in the city has been a bit of a, <laughs> a difference for me. Yeah. Um, my little sister moved up last year, um, so she lives in Partick, mm -hmm. and uh, so she's got a flat there oh, so that I could stay in conveniently. Been able to crash. Uh, it'd be nice to connect with her and see her again as well. <laughs> Mostly, yeah. no, actually, it's been fine. I, we were we were ready for it, you know, sisters. We've lived at opposite ends of the country for uh, a long time, but no, we've, we've got on fine. Um, yeah. She's been working from home, so with doing the street pastoral, I, I leave yeah. and uh, give her peace to, to work from home yeah. and uh, then come back and I'm tired after wandering about, so... You, you must be. Um, with, with the practice, is that is it an NHS practice? Is it mixed? It's mixed practice. Yeah. Um, sixty percent um private, forty percent okay. NHS. And I've got, did you have cover for for coming away? I take it because you must um, be busy as well. On my, the planet, so it can yeah, be easy. my my associates Gillian and and Paula are holding the fort, and <laughs> um, I haven't had too many phone calls. You know, that was <laughs> that was a thought for leaving. Actually, it was. <laughs> I haven't actually taken t two solid weeks oh, out of practice for a, a long time, so um, mm -hmm. coming down was a big thing um, to mm -hmm. get organised for. The computers haven't crashed, the phone lines yeah. haven't crashed. Uh, you know, you say these things quietly, and that's another thing you learn. In healthcare, you never say it's quiet. No, absolutely right. <laughs> yeah. Just we always say that if, if, if your nurse at the start of the day says, it looks like it's not going to be not too bad a day, you're like, no. Oh. I like to say that. That was what happened, that first patrol. Um, mm -hmm. There was 
um, there have been lots of short-term volunteers and so one of the short-term volunteers who uh, doesn't work in healthcare and, and she just went, oh, it's been quite a quiet shift. <laughs> As somebody from McDonald's comes in and goes, can you help us please? <laughs> <laughs> and then it all went from there. So uh, yeah, you, you learn when to say that keyword. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So have you found, have a lot of the people being, being from Glasgow, Scottish, or are people really coming in from all over? For, all over, all over. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think where to start with the countries that from people that, that we've yeah. met, American, Spanish, um, Mozambique, wow. uh, Uganda, um, all over, and, and then police from all over the country mm -hmm. as well. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of support there. And everything's been very positive mm -hmm. um, when we've been going about um, the patrols. We just walk and chat to people and feel sorry for the police who are doing 12 hour shifts mm -hmm. standing um, between the green and the blue zone, which the shifts have changed a bit, but uh, yeah, they were not much bother happening yeah. at all anywhere. I think what's interesting, I mean, we, we recently started the, the initiative uh, Net Zero Dentistry, you know, looking at how can we start to make a, a bit of a difference within dentistry with regards to plastic usage and, and um, you know, I guess waste um, and, and things like that. So, I, I, you know, I think what struck me, and, and there, is, there is a certain sense of the tide changing and, and uh, the public generally wanting change to happen. But I don't think it really struck me as strongly as it has done when I stood in the corner of the street the other week and just saw this procession of all these groups going past. And, and also just the fact that some of them had quite different ideology or opinions, but, but they were chanting next to each other and it all, from my point of view, seemed fairly good natured. There yeah, was no it argument. totally was. Um, yeah. I, I, how, how I got here, I knew that COP was happening um, a year past and I booked a time off my diary and, and planned to have that time because I had hoped to take a youth group down to make them aware okay. of climate change. Um, and over time, there were no events coming out, there was nothing happening. And then back in August, a friend had posted that street pastors were looking for, for volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, and so lots of people know that climate change is happening, mm -hmm. and but feel then powerless to actually implement any change. Mm -hmm how is me washing my hands in cold water uh -huh. comparable to, you know, the, the, the <laughs> however many um, billions uh -huh. that people make in uh -huh. big companies and the, the pollution that trucks and everything else cause and container ships and uh -huh. all the rest of it. So it's, um, we, we all need to be doing our bit. And I think lots of people realize that. And so, um, as part of taking young folk down, there was mm -hmm. the, the Future Fridays March um, last Friday and the, uh, there was so many young people from schools and it was a, um, a determined peaceful march. It didn't have as many of the bands and the drums that, that Saturday's march had, um, but everybody was there for the same reason. Mm -hmm. um, we're aware of what's happening and we're going to be the first generation to feel the effects of climate change. Mm -hmm. um, and as Barack Obama said, that the last generation to be able to, to do anything about it. Yeah. Um, and so the, the marches Friday and Saturday were really to let the leaders know that everybody is ready for change. Yeah. Um, and if you're not, where have you been? <laughs> and how are, we yeah. going to, how are we going to change yeah. things? Um, I think it has to be that combined approach because, uh, you know, I've, I've certainly become more and more aware of my own kind of carbon footprint and, and my own, especially plastic use. And I think what I've realised is you, it's really hard to be spontaneously green. You know, I'm, I work and it's really, really busy in the practice just now. And if I've, if I've not got up in time and I've not made lunch, and then by the time lunchtime comes along, I've got like, half an hour to get some lunch and eat it. So I go to the local shop and really the only option I've got for a quick lunch is buy stuff that's wrapped in plastic. And I come back, eat my lunch, and I look at the bin at the end of it and I just feel really guilty. And I'm like, I've, fair enough, I've got a sandwich in me, but at what cost, you know, look at all this plastic. Yeah, yeah, and, and um, 
it's it's single use plastic mm -hmm. that is the the main culprit, um, and and I totally hear you. Convenience um, and living in a in a green manner is so much about intentionality. Yeah, and and. I totally hear you. Life can get to be so fast, and you're just falling forwards mm -hmm. the whole time. Um, and it's where can we put our efforts to best use? Yeah. Um, there is only twenty four hours in everybody's day, yeah, and right. and how do we achieve that? Um, because the other side of the coin that people argue is that for we don't have enough resources for everything to be reusable mm -hmm. um but there's a happy medium i'm sure moving mm -hmm. forward um and and even in the practice i, I do just take my green hat off at the door and, and walk in to the practice because of the regulation and the guidelines yeah. um it's really difficult to negotiate that the re reduce reuse and recycle is mm -hmm. a chant that goes around my practice um yeah. One of my nurses, I call her, we just reuse and recycle, but she's in the wrong job. <laughs> <laughs> but bless her. Um, she, she has been a nurse for longer than I've been a dentist. Yeah. And um, so she's used to being, you know, hand mixing things, even even yeah. the Automix capsules that you get, mm -hmm. just, oh, the, the plastic, the, the stuff that gets chucked away is... Yeah. Um, a challenge. I mean, obviously, there's a degree of that that's unavoidable, unavoidable, especially with um, cross infection protocols and stuff like that. But there has to be better answers for certain things like um, plastic micro brushes and all sorts of things that we we potentially could make out of other materials. Um, and again, part of I guess the the initiative of net zero dentistry is is looking at how we can tackle things from a number of different perspectives. Um, you know, I'm certainly not an expert in sustainability or, or you know, green dentistry, but we recognise that there was quite a lot of profession who were talking about green dentistry, talking about what can we do, and, and we figured it was good to get people in the same arena and, and talk about it, and as a group potentially make an impact when it comes to speaking to manufacturers and, and looking at what can be done. So we're looking at it from a number of perspectives, one being um, you know, the, the, the awareness, so looking at in ourselves almost like an audit of what am I actually doing just now, you know, you know, and there's sometimes when I'm doing a, a number of composites, for example, and, and I'm, I'm using a micro brush, and if I put it down, I'm not sure then which one has got what chemical on it, so I end up taking another one, and I look at the end, and there's this, it's almost like, um, it's like up sticks. It's like up sticks. <laughs> exactly, that like kerplunk, this big pile of plastic sticks. I'm like, you're uh, showing your age now. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 1970s game, back. But I'm looking at it at the end thinking, yeah, I, I really could have planned that better and, and really not wasted as many of them. So part of it is going to be, um, as, as far as an audit cycle is concerned, is, is looking at our current practice. Um, and then looking at an education side of it, so we've put together a kind of education program of um, you know, what things can we pass on to people about what things they can do differently in their day-to-day their -day practice. Um, and then we're also looking at the, the kind of offsetting side of things, what, what kind of projects, um, given the fact that there are things in dentistry that we, we cannot get rid of, we have to do in a certain way, if this is our footprint, how can we then um, offset some of our carbon footprint, but, but do it in a way that is meeting gold standards. There's so many different carbon offsetting companies out there. It's an absolute minefield, you yeah. know, and, and some of the folk we spoke to, you know, you're, you're trying to figure out, well, where does the money actually go? If we raise money, what what are you going to do with it? And some of them are things like, well, we, we give the money to um, a, a farmer in South America and he promises he won't cut his trees down. And you're like, well, that's maybe not the best way of spending the money. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's, it's, um, the, the greenwashing thing, I think, is going to be a, um, a big issue moving forward. Yeah. Um, you see it about Glasgow at the minute, um, when, when I walk about, and I hate to say it, even in the green zone, mm -hmm. um, in, in COP, the, there are so many things where you go, <laughs> really? Um, so so shops say no we're we're green but they're still pushing you to buy cheap fast fashion. Yeah. Um. So so the audit of your 
lifestyle, it's how much um, are you willing to yeah. compromise or, or to change. When I, when I say compromise, um, we all are going to have to change our lifestyles and mm -hmm. uh, it's where can we change it that's, uh, that we're not losing too much. Really. Absolutely, and, and, and again, we've, with Net Zero Down Street, we're looking at the professional aspect of it, but we're also hoping people will then commit to personal things, so looking at their transportation, looking at, um, as a professional, and we think there's a, a real opportunity for team building here where we can get people um, giving suggestions for meat-free options where, you know, as a professional, we'll say, oh, let's have a meat-free meat -free Monday. Um, and, and we all um, we all do that on a, a certain day of the week. Um, other um, team building exercises like beach combing days and stuff and, and, and how great that would be for the profession if two days a year um, dental teams go out and parks and beaches and, and collect plastic waste. So there's, yeah, yeah. There's, and that's the thing, we've got a steering group now that's got lots of people and the ideas are coming in thick and fast for things we can do. So part of what we're trying to do now is really get the core of the idea together as to where are the biggest series of impact that we can make. Um, but the momentum and all the different follow on things are just massive, yeah, which is yeah, exciting it's, it's as well. Huge. It's huge. Yeah. It's, it's, so, um, it's so big and there are so many things that we can do. And it's so that was what makes it exciting as well, mm -hmm. um, to be able to, to drive change. Because sometimes the uh, job seems so big that you don't know where to start. Yeah. And so you just start with one step and a little bit at a time and yes it can have an impact on the dental team mm -hmm. um, because there's there's um patients are interested in it patients are mm -hmm. um focused on it and uh, so from from that consumer demand then we need to push on with the the companies to to make it sustainable yeah um, more like a circular economy rather than take use and waste it um mm -hmm. that we are able to not have so much of an impact on the mm -hmm. on the world and the environment and and again for team building so some of the the youngsters in the teams <clears throat> might not be as aware mm -hmm. of the impacts of their decisions on mm -hmm. a daily basis and mm -hmm. just being being made aware of that they start to realize round about themselves yeah and um, what impact they can have um, mm -hmm. so yeah it's it's uh, it's maybe an overwhelm of information but it's good to have that funnel to, yeah. to sieve out and, and discover what the greatest impact is going to be absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. And again, I think you're right in that it has to be that... And, and again, the, I think the net zero dentistry thing came from looking at, well, you know, we have an, an influence within a profession. You know, there are, what, 40, 50,000 dentists in the UK, something like that. That's a good chunk of people that if, they, if everybody pulled together and did their bit, that actually begins to make a difference you know yeah, and yeah. and again you get inspiration regardless of your your, your kind of political views or, or your your views and environmental views you look at the people that were marching um, the other day and the sheer volume of people um you know with um you know with a message of saying we are here and we have an opinion it is impressive you know whatever that opinion is it's still impressive <laughs> that they're, yeah, they're, yeah. they're doing it you know yeah there is there is lots of different messages um but pull in the same direction. Yeah. Um, and and so it's, yeah, the change is going to come and uh, how quickly is up to us. Indeed. I even think, you know, there, there are obviously a lot of people who argue the bit as well about the about climate change and whether climate change can be directly related to, um, you know, to carbon emissions and things. But, I, you know, I'm not even that interested in getting into those kind of debates because all you have to do is look at some of the, the stuff that's happening with plastic pollution in the sea. You don't yes. have to believe in climate change to see if you take a, a Lincoln turtle from the Galapagos and open it and it's full of plastic, that doesn't matter what's happening with the climate, that's not a good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From just from an environmental yeah. point of view, from, from the, the fish in the sea and, and yeah. the, the animals, um, yeah, it, plastic is ubiquitous now. Yeah. It's and and the the plans for gathering the plastic in the ocean in these big garbage <laughs> zones, mm -hmm. um, and so if we can stop it getting to the shores, and get it recycled, get it stored in a safe place, mm -hmm. um, dealt with, then yeah, yeah, the just your local environment, just yeah. walk down the street, um, 
Fui Anne from in Kintour, we have a little group of us who have uh, started litter picks yeah. and uh, we've got bins located in three strategic corners of the village mm -hmm. um, with litter pickers and bags, hand sanitizer and um, the one of our young leaders who was doing a young leadership programme this year had uh, organised people during lockdown mm -hmm. to go out individually and post pictures and share and uh, I thought naively that it would help reduce the amount of litter and, and it has uh -huh. but you can still go out regularly uh -huh. and, and gather bags constantly uh -huh. constantly yeah. um, we have a joke carriageway around about Kintour and the slip road around about there is uh -huh. hideous yeah um just unbelievable so yeah yeah the, the more people there are the more litter there is and the more there is to pick up so it needs more of us doing absolutely that. but any any amount that's removed is is uh, a reduction on the environmental impact and and um, you know my uh, daughter one of my daughters as part of a school project had to do a litter pick so as a family we did it just in a, a local park and we thought oh, there's a few bits and bobs by the end of it we had about three bin bags full um and actually it was hugely satisfying to look at the you know all that stuff that we had taken away and, and, and cleared up. So um, that, and, and again, I think just the, from, from a sheer point of view of obviously mental health in, in, in profession is not amazing. And, and these are things that all of us can do that you can, you can feel good. You can look at that, I felt brilliant. It was like, <laughs> I can write papers, I can help patients. You can do all these different things actually looking at three huge bin bags full of plastic <laughs> you've taken it apart sense of achievement you've, you've, yeah, I feel good. yeah 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 the, i think in dentistry you're right they the where you can be in a little box in a little clinical box have to be in control have to be follow the rules um mm -hmm. and we don't get outside enough to see the sunshine and the fresh air and yeah. sometimes you don't feel that you're making a difference because you're on that treadmill mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. Now I have to say, all my patients are lovely, of course. Yes. Um. That, and so I do feel, um, a sense of job satisfaction, but you you can be on that treadmill. Absolutely. And, and yeah. um, actually, this two weeks out, um, one of my friends spoke to me on the phone and said, "What's it like pretending you're not a dentist for two weeks?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Well, actually, yeah, it's been a bit different. <laughs> I haven't um completely." thrown off the, the shackles of being a dentist because yeah. I'm here. Exactly. But um, <laughs> the, that creativity that when you're in the, the surgery, sometimes I feel that um, it's difficult to express any creativity. Absolutely. Yeah. A, and so these projects, um, team building, um, see that we're not just dentists yeah. that we have an impact. I think you're right. I mean, but while you see patients for checkups and and see things that have succeeded, part of the problem with dentistry is most of the time, if patients are coming back, or or they're coming to see you, they've either got a problem, or they're in pain, or they're not happy, or it's something that's failed. So you're you're constantly seeing problems, you know. Um, this. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, problem it solver. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but you're right, I think that, that aspect of um, it's nice to make an individual difference, but when you get enough people all doing the same thing, and that's really the point of view when we're looking at the beachcombing and, and the park cleaning and um, team building days, it, it's, it's a personal thing, but it's also if, you, if we can get enough people together doing that uh, on behalf of the profession, for one, we make a bigger impact, and for two, there's the mental health element of it, and for three, there's also the, the, the issue of the public perception of dentists and dentistry. When was the last time you saw a positive media story about dentists? <laughs> you know, um, so I'm sure there'll be some media pun about extracting litter or something that they, they could come up with. But... Yeah, right, the headlines yourself. Exactly, but, but wouldn't it be nice to actually have a nice media thing saying, here's some nice dentists making a difference to our planet. Yeah, you know? yeah, it would indeed. Here's hoping. <laughs> Watch this space. Indeed, indeed. So your, your plans then from, from now, what's, um, when do you head back up? Um, head back up the road on, on Saturday morning yeah. and get the train back up and back into the practice next week. Yeah. See what see what awaits me. Indeed. Um, I have been on the phone, so it's not that they're completely keeping everything yeah. <laughs> away. Um, but no, it sounds like it's all gone, gone fine. Yeah. Um, I have a new prime scan waiting for me. Oh, exciting. <laughs> so there's all that 
uh, going in. And so, so we're just saying the algae and the, the, the plastic, plastic tray is the excellent Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and getting to play with toys as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, technology. I think that's another point is, is technology. It's a both and situation. We don't mm -hmm. dump technology. Mm -hmm. um, for the green issues, it's it's utilizing mm -hmm. and using it, um, in the best way possible. Minimize yeah. energy use and consumption as well. So uh, absolutely, we'll see what happens. What um from this experience coming down to COP twenty six, what do you think are the biggest things that you're taking away from it? <sighs> what what's the biggest things yeah. I'm taking away? Intentionality mm -hmm. is is. Yeah, you you have to to have space to set your intentions mm -hmm. um, and making space in your life and then you can take it to the practice level and, and on, a, on a daily basis. Um, from, a, from a green point of view, I, I think there are so many, it's, it's just raising awareness in your consciousness that everything you do every day mm -hmm. has an impact all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so there's not, I'm not going home with that, this message. Mm -hmm. um, and then creativity uh, is another message mm -hmm. um, from that, yeah, we are created um, and we are creative. And so yeah. that being able to um, use that in dentistry, home life, music, Lots of different ways. Net zero dentistry. Where is our, our creative ideas going to spring from? Mm -hmm. So those are the, the three. Um, and it's funny because actually when we've put things out there saying we're, we're looking for ideas and different things, one of the biggest things has been people coming up with, with uh, meat free dinner options and I want to give you some recipes and do this and that's again that's that's the creative element that, that often we don't really get to engage in, and, and use. You know? Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to those ways. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Good. Good. Yeah, Excellent. Well, well, safe travels back, and um, you. hopefully your team have uh, have kept the, the ship sailing well, and uh, have a nice, that. easy transition back in. But uh, it's been great having you here, and, and great to hear about a, a, a different side of COP twenty six than, than maybe we've heard in the um the news. Maybe a lot of the stories you can't really openly talk about um on on camera. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, it's it's. People, people in crisis um, and yeah. street pastors are there helping people in crisis. Um, it, it's opened my eyes to situations in Glasgow city centre and um, people who are on the streets or not on the streets because mm -hmm. now they're using hotels since Covid and that's yeah. carried on. Um, and their, um, their situations, the people who are trafficked, Mm -hmm. um, people who are refugees um, in the situations they find themselves in and th that ties into climate change as well because as the um, southern parts of the world are heating up they're going to not be able to sustain life and so we're going to have climate refugees in the same way as yeah of course I mean, if people are getting out from war zones they'll want to get out of countries that are uh, famines and droughts and yeah. 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 So, so long term, there's going to be climate refugees. Wow. Um. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I think mm -hmm. that's another thing to be think, aware of. And again, from, from um, we could talk about this for hours, but from your perspective, I think we all lead a fairly blinkered life, and that you, your your perception of the world is kind of what's in your your vision. Um, and I've certainly encountered um, you know, trafficking type stories recently in areas that are not far from here and you think part of you can't quite believe that that's happening on your doorstep but it is and that's the terrifying part of it it's, it's right there yeah, yeah yeah and we and we don't see it um and and um that sometimes you are powerless mm -hmm. and you need to trust that the systems that we have in place gathering evidence mm -hmm. the court systems the policing systems um to help those people um, but but sometimes it's getting that evidence in, and then sometimes people don't want to be helped no. that they're in that situation um and so yeah it's closer than we realize accept and want to believe mm -hmm. it's um so yeah the uh 
we are fortunate to live in the country that we are in mm -hmm. with the systems that are in place um, and so that's another lesson from uh, from working with the street pastors is mm -hmm. just where that line is yeah. and how much you can help. Of course and you know I guess a nice conclusion as dentists uh, sometimes I find um, uh, or, or certainly historically I found one of the issues is people have expectations of you and, and, and in the past people are maybe um, you don't get thanked all the time for efforts and things that you do I'd imagine in the street pastors you will get a number of people <coughs> who are very very grateful and very thankful I'd imagine there's an awful lot that aren't so I would also like um, as a Glaswegian um, just to say thank you and thank you for coming and helping <laughs> our citizens. Thanks, I have to say that on when we were helping with the march on Saturday the local police and as yeah. we've walked about for the past two weeks um local police will say hi guys we are so glad you're yeah. here and i was surprised by that i thought they would just have left us in peace but no they are more than happy to engage clearly mm. have worked for a long time with the street pastors and they have a very good reputation yeah. so it, it has been my privilege to work with the street pastors for mm. those past two weeks and i will pass on their thanks <laughs> <laughs> your thanks to them as well no, Indeed. Well, we'll maybe even put up a link so that um, if anyone's interested they can they can have a look at the organization but it, it's clearly doing some great work and i'm assuming we'll uh, continue to it do does so, continue. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so thank you street pastors so yeah. Great. Thanks okay. You. Well, enjoy your uh, the the rest of your time in Glasgow, and uh, thank you again for for chatting. Good luck with your net zero dentistry. Thank you very much. <laughs>